Once again, I welcome you to my weekly webcast, weekly for the 40 to 45 weeks out of the year that I'm in Washington, D.C. during a weekday. I'm home every weekend, obviously. Uh, this is a continuation of a series about uh, how a bill becomes a law. And so this week, we're going to concentrate on the conference committee aspect of a bill. Uh, and I'm in one of the rooms that the Senate Appropriations Committee uses for their deliberations, but it's also a room that sometimes is used uh, uh, by uh, various members of the House and Senate to negotiate differences between a House bill and a Senate bill. For instance, I spent several weeks a year ago uh, in 2008 in this room uh, with uh, members of the House, few members of the Senate, negotiating differences between a House-passed agriculture bill and a Senate-passed agriculture bill. Uh, not every conference committee meets in this room. But before we get uh, to talking about a conference committee, some things can happen to a bill that has passed the House and the Senate that may avoid the need for a conference committee. Uh, and let's uh, just uh, say for sake of illustration, a bill passes the House of Representatives, comes to the Senate. If the Senate passes it exactly the way it passed the House, it immediately goes to the President for signature. Uh, if, if a bill come from the House comes to the Senate uh, and it's amended by the Senate, and change just a little bit or maybe a lot, goes back to the House of Representatives, the House of Representatives could accept that Senate change and if it did that, it would go to the President of the United States. But a conference committee is used when a bill amended by one House or the other that those amendments or amendment is not accepted by the other House and one House would ask for a conference committee. So a conference committee would be made up, most likely, of members from the committees that the respective bills come from. And the majority party would have a majority of the conferees from both houses. The minority would be represented. Uh, usually the chairman and ranking member would be the people representing the Republican and Democrat parties depending on which one was in the majority and minority. Uh, then there would be uh, usually a few other members, but always one more from the majority party. Uh, they would come and meet maybe once and get it done very quickly, or you could do like I've just said, the difference between the House and Senate Agriculture Committee bills, the Conference Committee went on for several weeks before finally there was an agreement. When that agreement's arrived at, then it goes back to the House and Senate for consideration and must get a majority vote in both houses. And when that happens, the bill goes to the President of the United States. Very seldom are these compromises that are called committee conference reports are uh, rejected by a House or Senate. If they were rejected, then you'd have to go back to conference to work out differences again. That ha happens very seldom. Um, and, and so that's how a bill goes. Now I want to tell you that uh, I've, I've spoken about how it's supposed to work. Now let me tell you how, so how sometimes a conference committee works and gets the job done that it isn't supposed to work. For instance, on a stimulus bill that was recently passed February of 2009. Uh, I was a conferee, but I was never notified when the conference was working uh, and uh, deliberating, and no other Republican was. The Democrats, being in the majority, decided that they were going to negotiate just among themselves. And there was one meeting of the conference committee, and it was a meeting after the Democrats had made all the decisions of what they wanted to do 
on the stimulus bill and basically we were invited to a meeting that was nothing more than to give a few remarks pro and con about the bill uh, and uh, to have what we call a photo op. The television cameras and the still media come in and take pictures supposedly to tell the public that things were done in a very open way when in fact they weren't done in an open way. Uh, and uh, I gave my remarks at that meeting against the stimulus bill, a stimulus bill that quite frankly I hadn't even seen. Uh, but I knew enough about it because I previously had voted against it the first time through the Senate that I knew I wasn't going to vote for the conference report again anyway. Now, uh, I, in that particular instance, I'm saying the Democrats met in secret. I've also been involved in some meetings where when Republicans were in the majority, they met in secret. In fact, uh, the now chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Charlie Rangel from New York, was in the minority at a particular time on a tax bill, and he made kind of a joke about going around to this meeting or that meeting and opening the doors and seeing was the committee conference committee meeting in this room or that room and one time he did find where we were meeting and he came in and sat down and uh, knew he wasn't really welcome even though he was an official conferee uh, and kind of made a joke out of it and then got up and left. Now that's not the way it's supposed to be done and in most instances it's not done that way but I want to tell you that sometimes uh, people in this, they got enough power in this town uh, that by sticking together as a majority uh, they can get things done whether Republican or Democrat. But in most of the instances, conferences meet in open session uh, to deliberate or if it's in a closed session to deliberate to actually discuss things in a bipartisan way. In that instance, it passes both houses, and if it does, it goes to the president for signature, and then is the law of the land until Congress would change it somehow, or a court might make a decision that certain parts of it might be unconstitutional. This week, so, the Senate is working on the energy and water appropriation bill. And if we get that done later on, we'll be working on the Agricultural Appropriation Bill. And if we get that done, the Military Construction Appropriation Bill. These are three bills of about 13 different pieces of appropriations legislation we have to pass in order to fund uh, the government beyond October 1st, 2009, called the 2010 Appropriation Bill. Thank you for joining me for this webcast.